say bye. Craig Hanna, first time I've done this in a while and we're back in the old setting in the lobby in Man Island as well. Uh, obviously City coming up at the weekend game, at the weekend's game. Uh, Big game for Liverpool, obviously, and you, there's been a bit of you know back and forth from from Klopp and Pep this week, and I've been, I've been doing all the agendas for Talking Red, so I know full well that it's been a, it's been rumbling on for a few days now. But Mane's finally uh, had his say after Pep called him a diver, and, and to be honest, Craig, I was absolutely gone when I read this this morning. You sort of think when when a footballer responds to a manager that he's going to be a bit professional and be like, oh, I, I didn't really see it or I didn't listen or whatever, and Mane just comes straight in and goes, if it could be for a, if it could be a penalty for sure, I will dive again, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm absolutely here we go, made up. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, all I can think is now at the weekend, if, if Mane dives to win a penalty for us and like it gets given by VAR and everything, I'm just gonna honestly, I'm just gonna never stop laughing oh, ever again. Oh God, that that'll be. Um, you've got me dead excited. There. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to do the Suarez, uh, the Suarez, the Moyes dive. If he does get it, doesn't he? I love all that. I love him. Uh, I love him giving it back to to, to Guardiola, and um, I can't I can't work out if Guardiola is you know good at mind games, shit at mind games just a bell end, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like one of them where, um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm excited to see what Manny does this weekend and, and I think that Pep Guardiola will have just fueled the fire for him because there's no way Sadio Manny thinks, oh, I'm worried about diving now that Pep said it about him. I think it's one that he's tried to get in the referee's head rather than anything, but then sometimes I, th I feel like that puts pressure on, on the refs that then if, you know, if they do get the wrong decision, and look, there's VAR as well now, so that, you look at the ones, um, Manny against Leicester, Manny um, against uh, Villa, was it? Yeah, Ma the one against Villa he gets booked for. He gets booked, but yeah. it actually it was harsh, that one, I yeah. thought. Um, I don't think either of them are dives, and I think that's, that's Pep Guardiola just trying to stoke the fire and, and see what he can get out of refs. And, um, and dreadful at mind games. I think it's interesting that because Mane, Mane goes on to say that, that he thinks he's just trying to get the attention of the referee. And I, I sort of don't think he is. I think he was just being a prick. I think his team hadn't played well that day. You know, they, they only just scraped past the Southampton side who'd lost like, you know, one of the most embarrassing performances I, I, I can remember in the Premier League, 9 0 to Leicester. I think Guardiola was literally just trying to, you know, deflect a bit of attention away. I don't think it really was mind games, and if it was, then like it's shit because it's not subtle at all. But what's he, what's he trying to deflect from? I don't understand. I think you might be right. I think he, he might just be a little bit rattled by the Reds. Like he might have, he might have uh, I think seen we're definitely the side. Of it, yeah, yeah he, 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 you know, I hear this like rent-free living shit because like we're con we're constantly thinking about Man City. We're constantly thinking about what we're, we're checking their score. We're thinking about what they're doing. We're you know hoping for injuries. I am. I don't know if you are. I'm not. I'm not scared to say. It. I'm looking and thinking, Ederson, please be out as long no. as Allison, that sort of thing, um, because I want to win this league badly. But I think that um, it, it's it's a funny one with Pep and the mind games sort of thing. Because I was thinking the Solskjaer doing his mind games to us before in that video where they say to him like, "Is De Gea and uh, who was the other one? Um, are, are two Pogba? Pogba. Is De Gea Pogba and Pogba awesome. going to be fit?" And he goes. No, no, definitely <laughs> not. It's like not. it's like it's like whenever like your man goes like, are you going to be out late tonight? No, definitely, <laughs> definitely not. No, it was one of them, and I think Guardiola. I think Guardiola. Yes, he is trying to be a little bit a bit of a bell end. Maybe he's venting at the fact that Liverpool have, have won late, and he's just realised that coming into uh, having a microphone pointed in front of his face that he'd seen that we were one 0 down because that would piss me off as well. Um, and yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just a bell end. Yeah, maybe all three. <laughs> like, like you say, I don't, I don't believe in that whole sort of living rent free in someone's head. I think it's human nature that, you know, as Liverpool fans, City are going to be in our heads. As Liverpool players, probably the manager, City are going to be in their heads as well. And they're going to try and, you know, act professional on the outside. But Guardiola obviously let the mask slip for a bit. But Craig mentioned about Edison's injury, obviously, last night in the City's Champions League game. But first, there's a little clip from the second look, which is looking back at our Champions League game against Genk. So here that is. In the in of all of the games in the eight games in a, in a row where we've conceded, you know, goals, some of them you can look at and go, that was just a good yeah. goal. Sometimes you just concede goals, and yeah, that will be something that Klopp's annoyed about. But again, he'll also think and go, but it's a makeshift defence, and maybe Milner's forgotten it was his man, or or you know yeah. what I mean. Like, and it's not good enough, and they need to sort it out. But I also don't think he'll be sitting there going. What the hell am I going to do with this defence? Yeah. yeah, I think one thing as well that Klopp always does is that he's very much of the idea of he's not trying to eliminate all mistakes. He's aware that mistakes are going to happen and it's how you deal with them. And the psychology of the fact that we're conceding goals, conceding goals, conceding goals and still winning the game. Teams are getting in front 
and still losing the game. And that psychology is not only seeping into us thinking, look, we're never beaten, we can always find another chance. It's seeping into the opponents as well. So that's probably a better place to be than if you just got clean sheets all the time and people think that they're never gonna score against us. Because if they then do score, as you say, goals can happen, then they'll probably take more from it than if they score and think, oh, well, they're still gonna score three more and win anyway. And there's also an argument, of course, that it's, it's I don't think we wanna concede goals but I think giving teams chances is enti- it's entirely plausible. Yeah. You've said now, you know, that they that they started to come out. Mm-hmm. Well, as soon as a game looks more open, I'll bet my money on Liverpool every time. Yes, Do you know what I mean? So I think there's there's probably an, an argument that Klopp's maybe like, look, we don't want to concede goals, but if you want to give them, a, you know, if they get a couple of chances, I'm not going to be screaming and shouting at you because that means they're going to get more and more confidence that they're going to get chances. They're going to come out, and then we can hit them. Yeah, make sure you download our app for more of that sort of thing and more of this sort of thing as well. If you do watch Talking Reg, you can download the app for free and you can still watch it on there for free and you get a load of tokens as well, which you can use to you know, get some of our premium content for free as well. Um, but as I mentioned, City played Atalanta last night, drew 1-1 Craig and there was a bit of keeper drama. I know there's a few people on Twitter. I, I was asleep, to be honest. I sort of, I sort of woke We're up. We're working you too hard. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I woke up from a nap and everyone was going, oh, there's an outfield player in goal clacks. And I was thinking, like, what game's this in? And then I realised that City were playing and I realised that Edison had got injured and you know you mentioned it in, in the first part about the Holder Hayes situation. I, I don't believe for a second, and there's already headlines this morning by the way saying that he's hopeful of being back. I don't believe for a second he's going to be out of this game. Absolutely not. I reckon he was just a bit cold, you know. <laughs> it looked freezing, like it looked just absolutely a bit bored freezing. And, cold. and he hadn't done much, I think. Uh, I didn't watch it to be honest. I, I turned it on. This is this is sort of a microcosm into how I feel about other football that isn't isn't Liverpool. Is that I had no interest to watch it as soon as I saw that uh, a goalkeeper had been sent off and it was. Kyle Walker going in, I was like, fucking LBT Sport app right now. <laughs> and you know what? Atlanta, they had a free kick and, and Walker sort of saved it with like three touches. It looked a bit dodgy. And if I was at Atlanta, I'd be looking at that thing and just need to share that, you know, share the goal with shots now. And they didn't get anywhere near it. And City did really well at managing the game out. They did, but um, it's, uh, I don't, you know, it's not going to dent City's, City's chances of going through. Um, and, and they did really well in that last 10 minutes to ensure that Cal Walker didn't have anything to do, really. I think he touched the ball twice with his hands. Um, so it was just a mad, a mad sort of last 10 minutes. And uh, not as exciting as you'd, you'd hope when you see the headlines of, ah, outfield, because it's one of the best things in, in footy, isn't it, when something mad like that happens? No. I also, I also, you know, with the, with the whole injury thing, I know going into the game, there's a few people who were saying, oh, is De Gea being out actually going to benefit United because he's not playing too well and, and Romero is actually a pretty good keeper. I sort of do think that with, with City as well, you know, Claudio Bravo's a, a perfectly good keeper and we've seen, you know, in, in the game where a keeper was actually injured with Lloris, Gazaniga makes about 72 saves against us and he's yeah, he then, absolutely ridiculous Yeah, but then Claudio Bravo comes on last night and gets sent off and, and like, I read a few things last night to say that when he did come on, there was a little bit of shakiness around in the in the defence, and I think it's just a it's like a mindset thing that you know probably at the at the beginning when uh, Adrian came in for Allison, I think there would have been that worry as to do we play it back? There's basically they're not playing the normal game, are they? Because no. everything that uh, that Man City do, and same with us with with Allison and in, in, in goal is is because you've got a top class keeper that you can trust him, you can play the ball back to him and know that he'll be able to spread it to, to the left or to the right and or hold on to it for a long time to draw the the, uh, the attackers in and then he'll release it. You, that's that's your, your game plan. As soon as it's another goalkeeper in, I know Claudio Bravo is good with his feet, but as soon as it's another goalkeeper in, there's that doubt sets in. And I think, I think for a little while you would have seen that with Man City last night. And I think, you know, it would be a little boost uh, in my eyes, because I think Ederson's a top class keeper and Bravo's pretty good himself, but I think there's still that little boost because it's that that thing in their mind that's like, oh, well, we're you know we're not a full strength in that. Mm, having a bit of an alleged injury crisis at the moment as well, City. Uh, Rodri was out, but I know he's been pitching in training, so I think there's a few people saying that he's going back play. for the game as well. Uh, but Sane, Silva, Laporte, and Zinchenko could all miss out, and it's got me wondering, to be honest, Craig. You know, all the times we've played City down the years. It's, it's sort of usually been when they're actually playing quite well. I know because you know, for the most part, they've just played well constantly. But I do wonder whether you know if there was any time in the last three years or however long you know, Klopp's been competing with Pep Guardiola, there's ever been a time to play them. Is this the time? Um, yeah, but I think that's more because of how Liverpool are playing, how they look, and you know, I'm reading loads of things and it's around like Liverpool not being absolutely brilliant, but 
they are they are being absolutely yeah, brilliant. It's just that it's just that they're not absolutely pummel, pu- pummeling teams. You know what I mean? They're not killing them off. Um, you know, three, four, and five, um, five goals. And I think that um, you know, I, I'm excited for Sunday. I'm not nervous. I see it as a I see it as an opportunity. I see it as an opportunity to go nine points clear, not a threat that it'll be only three. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's a good place for Liverpool fans to be. And I think. I think Anfield will be bouncing on Sunday. I think the players will be like that as well. And I don't think for a second they'll allow what happened last year in the game where it just sort of pairs out into nil-nil. And yes, City could have won at the end with a Mahrez penalty, but they don't. I just don't see it happening. I don't see anyone being happy with that scoreline. I think City will want to um, you know, hold on to it being a draw until about 60, and then, like last year, and then see if there's an opportunity for them to, to, to get more out of it. But I think for us, we'll want to get on the front foot. We'll want to, from the off, um, get at them in a similar way that we saw in the in the Champions League and and in the second half of that league game a couple of years ago because I was thinking about that league game and this one sort of, it sort of reminds me the way it's a it's a half four on a Sunday it's just as it's getting dark it's under the floodlights and the atmosphere that day was one of the best I've ever experienced yeah, in a league game um, and that 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 game feels like a turning point for me in terms of Klopp's whole tenure and what happens after that and the belief that comes from that and the performances you see from people like Robertson and for, for the first time and things like that. So that felt like a big turning point. And I think, you know, fast forward to now, I think it'll be more like that game this time around. I just don't see Jurgen Klopp allowing uh, the team to sort of play at a slow tempo and sort of just be happy with one point. Yeah, and obviously Sunday is all that's occupying our minds at the moment, but I'm going to need you to look a bit further into the future because we've had the question from yesterday's video, which is, who would you prefer as our next manager when Klopp eventually leaves? I know there's a few people who always kick off about this the because future. they're saying they don't, they don't want Klopp to leave, but you know, his contract's up in 2022. I think there's a very real possibility that he, that he mm. leaves Liverpool at that point. But the two options they've given are Pep Blinders and Steven Gerrard. Now I know my answer for sure. <laughs> I think I know your answer for sure as well. <laughs> um, Look, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird one. Ask me in a year, and, and, and I know that's not answering the question now. I think it's looking too far into the future at the minute. And look, Klopp's mate, you know, Klopp, Klopp keeps mentioning 2022, and I think he might extend on towards that. I think he's just sort of, you know, ensuring that the club are preparing themselves in case he decides. Um, I think every time you read anything about Pep Linders, the way he studies the game, uh, the way he is on the training pitch, um, in fact, it'd be a really interesting podcast, and it's something that we should do. But um, and just even hearing him in the press conference, at, you know, for the for the League Cup, the way he talks about the the game and the way he talks about you know in, intensity being what Liverpool's all about, and he talks about it with excitement. And you can tell the footballers like him. You can tell you know because he's been someone that's been there since since Rogers. So he sort of came through. Obviously, he leaves for a little bit, comes back. I just really really like him, and I think that I think that he might be a brilliant manager someday. Maybe it's too early for Liverpool. Maybe the best thing is having a Gerrard that's you know that the 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 figure at the forefront of it all, and have Pep Linders in the background in the same way that it is at the moment. Maybe that's what you need. You need someone of the stature of Gerrard, but someone with the you know that studied the game in the way that Pep Linders does um, on the tactical side of things and on the training pitch. Um, so maybe that's a cop by answer. It is a cop by answer. <laughs> no, I think, I, I, think, I think it's the sensible answer because I think, you know, it's, it's quite clear from the way that we've approached the Carabao Cup and things this season that we're almost preparing Pep Linders, I think, to, you know, take over the reins from Klopp. I think it makes the most sense in terms of being, you know, the least transition from Klopp. But, you know, I'm, I'm not very sensible. I'm just a football romantic. And yeah. Steven Gerrard to me just sounds like an absolute match made in heaven. And I'm hearing good things about, you know, what he's doing at range as well in terms yeah. of the culture he's instilling there. I don't believe that he's going to be there until 2022. I think, he, you know, he... he probably wins an SPL at some point hopefully this season you know in, in, if like you're thinking about him becoming a Liverpool manager in 2022 um, but I just that's that's just what I want I just want Steven Gerrard to be I here I know what you mean you want the excitement <laughs> of fucking hell Gerrard's yeah, back it would just think, get us all so up I think, I think what Liverpool fans probably need and I, I'm sh- you know there's loads of Celtic and Liverpool fans out there and in, within the city of Liverpool especially but um, you know we probably need li- we probably need Rangers to win the title this year because then he becomes he be- instantly becomes a hero for them if he's able to stop Celtic from winning ten in a row or whatever it is. Um, I think that would be huge for Liverpool. It'd be huge for him to be coming to Liverpool, having won a league, having uh, won hopefully more, um, and 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 be able to you know look at what he did as a as a player, but now look at what he's done as a manager, and then he gets the whole it's like a return of a messiah coming back. I think um, I think probably the the answer to the question in terms of who should be Liverpool's next manager 
probably isn't either of them really if we're being honest with ourselves it probably you probably allow Gerard maybe four years five years and then he, be, he becomes it rather than you know bringing in a Simeone or a you know like you know something mad like a Pochettino or something like that I think where Liverpool are and they're standing within Europe now it means that they can basically shop for the best manager and um, none of us want to see Klopp ever leave no. because he's now like he's He's a whole generation shankly now, isn't he? And it's you know mad that we're able to say that. But um, I think when that time comes, he'll leave Liverpool in a place like he's already planned things like the the move to Kirby and the you know Togani Road expan expansion and, and everything he's done with the culture of the club. He's, he will leave it in a good place no matter what happens. Yeah. So my answer, Stephen Gerrard, Craig's answer is inconclusive. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a question for us, leave it in the comments below and it will get answered in tomorrow's video. Download the app as well and uh, we'll be ready.